Mike Maloney with the Gold Silver Show, and I want to welcome Tavi Costa from Crestcat Capital back to the show once again. Tavi, how are you doing? Mike, thanks for having me. Looking forward to this, especially in a day like today and in a moment like right now, which is so critical. So happy to be here. Yeah, well, silver has just been screaming, hasn't it? It's, uh, you know, finally, it's 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 having the explosive move. I think the beginning of, of an explosive move of, as we we've been uh, both uh, talking about for so long now. And it certainly seems like things are unfolding very quickly in front of us. Exactly. So uh, why don't you go and show us your first chart? You've got uh, the, the silver breakout. Now, uh, you made this chart a while back, right? This has been... Um, is what date did you make this version of the chart on? Because I remember seeing this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, no, I've been using this chart for some time to be, to be frank. And I, mm -hmm. I've, I've been noticing this consolidation period that we've had over the last three years. It's, and a lot of people have lost faith in, in the metal. And, and to me, it was just a consolidation before a major breakout. And um, now this chart is actually, as of now, I just literally just put this okay. chart together. So uh, we're it's a quarterly candle chart of silver going back to the 1970s, and clearly we're breaking out uh, now, and and it's it's the beginning of a move in my view. I think we're going to chase those those uh, uh, prior highs that we've had in yeah. in the in those prior uh, periods, and and probably going to be breaking out because usually triple tops don't hold, just like we saw with gold. We're probably going to be breaking out and going a lot higher than the prior highs, and so that's key here right. uh, as an investor to understand. And remember, gold is the one that really started this move. It it started uh, with uh, the the its its own movement uh, above to record levels, and it continues to do a relentless move, mostly driven by central bank purchases. And now right. we're seeing the spill over to other things, and silver is the first one to be moving along and the miners are probably the next ones and are they're already moving but not having the explosive move we, we both would think that they would have in this environment yeah you know i want to point out to the public uh, dan can you zoom in on that chart once again um that not only do we have you know from the uh, 2011 high where um where Tavi has drawn that uh, trend line across there that we've broken. So we've we've uh, gone through the resistance of the trend line on the quarterly. So each uh, candle here represents three months. But there is a cup and handle uh, built up since 2011. But look at the giant cup and handle that has, is building up from 1980 to today. Hmm. <laughs> this is the biggest cup and handle. I've ever seen. There's, I've, I've never seen anything uh, like this. So this is suggesting a move that is um, much larger than the cup and handle, uh, or, you know, the the handle has a little bit of a head and shoulders in it, uh, inverse head and shoulders. Uh, the um, technical indicators here are just lining up for us. And now we've had the breakout, and then. Yesterday and today, we are now having the breakout at on the daily, and by the end of this week, it should be the weekly level uh, breaking past this trend line. You've got it on the quarterly. It doesn't exist on the yearly. It doesn't exist on the didn't exist on the monthly, the uh, weekly, and the daily. It was just the quarterly that showed this. But uh, once that once. You've got the breakout that you show here, and then you get to the next one, like a, a monthly, and then it, and they all start confirming each other. It's like for certain, and we are off to the races, and, and you're talking about uh, a slingshot move potentially, um, and it looks to me like we should be uh, seeing the 2011 highs once again, which means that uh, silver can almost, you know, 48 bucks or so pretty quickly. And then we'll see uh, some resistance and consolidation. And, and then we're going to break that. And I believe silver is absolutely destined for triple digits. Uh, do you believe silver is destined for triple digits one day? Absolutely. And I, I would say, you know, what's the, the crazy part of all this is, and it shows how undervalued the metal really is, is the fact that the gold to silver ratio is still is at 85, which is a historical high. If you go back in the history of this, 
actually we're at the same level we were at the depths of the global financial crisis and when gold and silver actually declined at the initial portion of or the middle portion of that uh, recession period and mm -hmm. and then we saw a major run up in the prices all the way to that 2011 period that you see in the chart and you know not to digress too much but if you want a roadmap to all this, just look at silver in yen terms, the Japanese yen terms, which is already retesting those highs of 2011. And I remember using that as a roadmap for gold itself, and it worked. And I do think this is going to work here too. So and show that to us again. Did you have silver with? Okay. I don't. I don't have the chart here, but it it We've does. Got gold. Okay. It does include a, a implies an appreciation of about 90 percent from current levels and. You know, I, I do believe that that's going to be the case. And when I, the main reason for that, Mike, as well, is it's just not a, just a demand story. It's a supply story too. Um, right. and, and in this chart, you can see uh, that silver production. And why do I use Mexico and Peru? Because Mexico and Peru are one of the largest producers in the world. They account for a very large percentage of, of production uh, in uh, globally. And not only that, if you looked at the combined amount of, of their production, it is down 25% from peak levels and actually about the same level it was 14 years ago. So, you know, when you think about a uh, supply constrained environment with a demand surging, this is, this is what creates that uh, explosive nature of the metal that we're, yeah. we both believe so much. Yeah. Uh, you know, with dwindling supply and now we should be seeing exploding demand. There's only one thing that can can correct, you know, that can make up for all of these imbalances, and that's price. And that's right. so, yeah. So, what's the what do you have next here well, for us? We we have recently acquired a oh. uh, a silver mine, uh, and uh, when I say recently, about a year and a half ago, we acquired the seventh largest silver mine in the world. We did that before the move. A lot of people like to buy after confirmation in price. I like to buy things when they're cheap, not after right. they went up. And right. so uh, that allowed us to do a leverage buyout of one of the largest silver mines in the world. And, the, you know, to me, the, the mentality or the mindset of an investor really is, I don't think of an, an investment in, in, in silver mines with the current prices. I'm, also, I'm always considering what would this project look like at $50 an ounce or tri triple digits, which I'm a firm believer that that's going to happen. And so... When I think about a project that today's prices are already highly uh, uh, profitable, I, I can only imagine what this is going to be worth in, in, a, in, a, in a world that I think it's going to be the case in, you know, potentially, you know, we, we don't know when, but it could be six months, three months, one month from now, things can move right. very quickly. So um, it, is, it is what gets me excited is, is to finding leverage to the silver uh, price. And I think there's many other opportunities out there. I'm not just pointing out one. There's, there's plenty others that look very attractive uh, to all this.